There's two more pages at the end. Mm -hmm. Can you see what road we got to the trailhead from there? We're about 20 miles off any paved road in the middle of nowhere looking for Skookum Lake. Welcome to our form of a podcast, uh, RMSO, Bigfoot Roundtable Drive. We're in the middle of Bigfoot country, lots of Bigfoot sightings around where we're at, obviously, in the name. We're on our way to remote Skookum Lake. You're going to have to follow some unmarked dirt roads, and then you have to hike into the lake. So, thought we'd bring you guys along so you guys can see a little bit of what the Skookum Lake area is like. And we're having a really rough time finding it. We know we're on the right road right now, but it's been a challenge. Nothing's marked. I wonder if that guy that just passed us just cleaned up all this. Mm. That's a good doobie. That might have uh, stopped our advancement. Mm. Look at all the dead fall across the road. Wow. I don't think Bigfoot wants us at Skookum Lake. For those of you that follow us and watch uh, a lot of our roundtable drives, we run into this a lot where we have to move trees and deadfall out of our way to some of the places we go to Bigfoot, so this is normal for us. Just hopefully we don't run into an obstacle too big for us to move. Wow, what a mess. <laughs> Rocks on the road. You viewers help keep an eye open for Bigfoot camera never blinks but we can only look one direction at a time if you see a Bigfoot in our video make sure you tell us the timestamp and kind of where at in the frame you know left upper blah 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 you know what we're talking about okay see anything that might I don't know let me just get out I don't think it's so what? I don't see anything sharp. Okay. Neither do I.
the bullet casings you gotta watch out for. I know. <laughs> yeah, we got a we got a flat tire last night out big footing. We were done for the day and heading back to camp and not even a mile after we like decided, you know, our next destination is back to camp. We got a flat tire. Just before dark. Out there in the middle of nowhere changing the tire. I didn't even know bullet casing was gonna stick in your tire. Yeah, it was a freak. A freak flat tire. Is this the end of the road? Okay, look at that big old freaking stump. He made it. Let's Gnarly, wow. Look at that boulder in the road. You guys have ever had a Bigfoot sighting, whether it was last week, last year, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, we want to hear about it. So email us at rmsobigfoot at gmail.com. And uh, I always ask for people to have Bigfoot sightings in more convenient places to get to. <laughs> We have to go to some crazy places. We might have to move this one ourselves, guys. Go over that. Stay Let's right. Let's see. Cool. Let me get over this I don't one. know if we're going too much further, though. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's about uh -oh. it for us. Dang! The yeah, guys. this is where the road ends. I'm marking this off for future reference. So close to. Look at this. Where the blue and the thread. Oh man. We just needed to go a little bit further and we would have walked to it. How much further? Not far. Look, it's right there. We just had to go down oh, this a little ways. Looks like a couple miles to me. Yeah. Yeah. But we drove a long ways just to get to that point. Skookum Lake close. Yeah. We're at 3,100 feet elevation. Closest town is Estacada, Oregon. What, are you seeing how close we got? Yeah. I mean, we don't have anything better to do. This is as close as we're going to get. Should we hike until we're, we get bored and come back? I mean, what else are we going to do? Let's okay. find a good place to park the vehicle and and walk back and I mean we might find footprints in this snow. Who knows? We can finish out the rest of the day and go up to that Ripplebrook cabin like that Ripplebrook. We'd have time. Remember when we 
got stuck at garbage in a situation like this and we hiked up and looked around and found all that. That just bugs me. We drove this far. I want to walk around a bit. I do want to find a good place to park though. Right here. I'm only going to drive past here. I would just park right there. I want the car kind of level. Maybe even turned around. It says that we walked for two hours. We went 4.73 miles. So burned 973 calories. We probably went five and a half miles. There's my old marker six right there. <clears throat> and as soon it, I don't know if this is true or not, but it says we have 15,324 steps. That's probably right. And I went up 10 flights of stairs. <laughs> well, you got you got longer legs than us, so me and Jenny probably did more than 15,000 scrap. Yeah. That was fun. So much for uh, waiting until 11 p.m. to rain. We got rained on on half of our six mile hike. <laughs> nice and all dry now. I'm going to put all this in the back. It's jerky in the shoes. Jerky. Yeah, I grabbed a piece of your jerky. <laughs> Good stuff, Brody. You want more? Nope. Okay. That's plenty. Well, I have a soda. That's like gold. I'm trying to find gold, man. Still on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That stuff is rare. All right. Just so you all, all know, the camera's rolling. We parked here uh, going into Skookum Lake. We got to where, where it was impassable, and we uh, hiked uh, nearly three miles in, and there was obstruction after obstruction, and we finally got to about a mile before the trailhead to Skookum Lake and uh, there was nothing but six foot snow six feet deep nothing but snow it was awesome amazing you guys will have to watch the Skookum Lake hike we heard a lot of grunting in one area and we weren't able to see what kept making the deep grunts back in there um, heard some whoops Um, Jenny heard some screams. Just one. And then um, found and measured an 18-inch track that looked a lot uh, awful Bigfoot shaped and dimensions uh, five inches wide at the hill and uh, eight inches wide at the toes. Perhaps it was a skookum. <sighs> It was a lot more definitive when we first found it and it uh, started to fill in with water uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> when the toes crum when the dirt cr crumpled in on the toes we started to laugh. Because <laughs> we, <laughs> we didn't have a camera. Uh, We're going to drive down off of this mountain to the Clackamas River and, and everything in between is a Bigfoot sighting hotspot. This area of Oregon we are in is the number one Bigfoot sighting hotspot in Oregon according to the Bigfoot sighting reports that have been uh, that have been logged. That's why we're here on this expedition. Whoa! Uh, more rocks came down. Oh, no, I think we went around that before. Yeah crazy yeah, there's none there. look how rugged it is trying to get in and out of these spots folks yeah we were the only people up here camera. <clears throat> I got it. I'm going to zoom in on this. 
Tell me when to stop. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Okay, I... Keep going. It, Another ten feet. Okay, I gotta see what's behind me. I don't want to hit a big old rock. I see something about dark back in there. We'll see. Let me look at that. Jimmy zoomed in on it. What was it? Could you tell? Nope. But there's a very bizarro little hut down there. Like a stick hut or? Yeah, here. Watch your back. Can't put push me back. Watch it. Oh, you recorded it? Yeah. Oh, whoops. Okay. Every, everything's better with your own two eyes. No, I can see it. there's something. Yeah, some type of a some type of a blind or a oh, it's shelter. Just right there. Uh huh. Yeah, I see it. There you go. Wait, hold on. What is that? I don't know. It might just be like a tree tipped out. You know those tree root balls? With some uh, sticks over it laid up against it. Almost feel like running down to it. Just right there. Want me to stay stopped? Well, let's go down in there. I mean, there's a, there's way, a way to go across if down you, in if there. If you park right here down in there and look at it, it's really nothing. But it's a small little here, walk. I'm going to run down right there. Can I take the camera? Well, Brody's going to run down and check it out by himself. I'm going to follow him. He's so much faster than me. You got your mace? Huh? No, but Brody has his. Okay. Now, if you guys find a bear den, that's not going to be pretty. No. So when you guys take didn't take the camera away from him, he doesn't know how to use it. When you guys didn't come back right away, I figured you guys were getting some kind of action. Yeah, it was interesting. It wasn't just what was weird there. It was what they they were pissed off. We were down there. Yeah, they didn't like. Didn't when you guys got closer to that structure, that's right, when you got right when we, we got to it. Circling around it. Yeah. We were circling around it, and then it started, um, did it go knock, 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 knock? Yeah, yeah, like about 15 times rapidly. Ba, 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 ba. And then it was kind of making like a little chirpy hoot noise. Uh-huh. And then some more knocking, and then Brody's like, knock. So I made a knock, and then I answered. Right back, did right you, back. Did you do a wood knock? Right back, yep. yes. And, and answered right just back. Did, I just did a big pop. And then right back, pop. But it was like a bigger stick than mine. Yeah, it was deep. <laughs> it was a <way> bigger <laughs> stick than mine. <laughs> like, like one of them big, heavy choke cherry yeah. sticks. Yep. It, it was a big thunk. And it was mine a was thunk. a little tack. Yeah, and it like broke the stick, so it was like ping. Yeah, mine and was it was like thunk. Like, yeah, mine was a little ping. Like a 22, and then... Well, that's not a woodpecker. A woodpecker can't hit like that. No, it was a big, deep thunk. I'm not quite sure what it was, but I hope that the camera caught it. I mean, I heard it with my own ears. And then, definitely the little hoot noises. Um, I don't know what else to call them. It, it didn't sound like a bird. Like a hoop. A whoop. A whoop. No. It's a noise I hadn't heard before. Yeah, it's a new one. A little hooping. Mm. It was crazy. Well, we're at the time of the day that animals move around, so this is probably the best time of day to get a road crossing. So it's also a great time to keep the dash cam rolling. There was a bunch of deer tracks down in there. Yeah, when we first got here, there was no deer tracks. And then on the way, hike back, we started finding fresh deer tracks that weren't there when we crossed the wet, snowy, muddy spots at first. So the deer are moving now. I know. We're always getting flat tires, big footing. Goes with the territory. 
I know there's a lot of people that like, why don't you guys do those uh, live videos when you're out Bigfooting? It's like, uh, we don't get no cell phone reception the places we go do I haven't I haven't had it all day <laughs> haven't had cell service for seven hours so you guys have to wait to see our videos till we get out of here <laughs> <laughs> we don't get satellite no yeah sometimes our GPS's don't work because we don't even get satellite hookups in places the canyons are so deep and narrow and the trees are so high and thick. Yeah, some of those forests, uh, the trees are like canopy. They enclose the sun. You can't even see. They're dark. Well, for about an hour on that hike, I kept feeling like I was being watched, and it was around the area that we were hearing the grunts and and the whoops. I actually turned around at one point because I thought something came up behind me, but there wasn't anything there. Yeah, there was a little bit of a creep factor there for a little while. Yeah. I know um, at the beginning of the hike, the very beginning, I thought I heard a coyote a couple of times making it a type of uh, bark noise. However, I can't say with 100% certainty that it was a coyote. Just that's what it reminded me of. Um, that grunting that we heard off and on for over an hour. That ah, was not a coyote. Well, it sounded like a gorilla. Yeah, it sounded like a <laughs> gorilla at the zoo. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Wonder if that's what left the 18 inch footprint. Either that or a double step of a bear. Not sure, but there wasn't any, um, there wasn't any, um, claw marks. Jenny saw a black bear yesterday uh, night, just before the sun went down, uh, by our base camp. Just through the grass. Out there in Roto Rhododendron. Rhododendron. I saw a possum yesterday. I, me too. I've never seen a possum in my whole life. We don't have them where we're at. Well, that tree gave me another scratch to go with the thousand I already have. Well, that hiking break we took, we were probably away from the dash camera for about three hours on all that. Well, what time did we start hiking? Was it like three? Yeah. Yeah, we've been up there about four hours. couldn't drive to Skookum Lake so we tried to hike in until we hit the uh, six foot deep snow and it wasn't just patches it was non-stop six foot deep snow you'll have to see our video we don't mix the driving and the hiking videos because it makes too long of a video so you guys will have to watch for uh, Skookum uh, Skookum searching for Sasquatch. 
or whatever we're gonna name it. <laughs> It'll have Skookum in it somewhere, since we're in the Skookum area. We did find a trackway though, that was pretty old. Yeah. Up there in the I'm snow. About that too. Yeah, they actually split into two trackways. They were stepping step for step with each other and then split apart and walked in two different directions. And that is really strange because I don't think uh, a bear would sit and step in, step in each other's tracks a pair of them and then and then split off. Well, they couldn't have made those track prints anyway. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. It was uh, a single line of it was. It was bipedal in a straight line. A straight line. And I've seen better enough know that they don't do that. They forage constantly while they go too. So they're always turning things over, digging at this, digging at that, sticking their nose in the snow and the mud. Sniffing around. Saw a blonde grizzly bear and it was hard getting him on camera because he wouldn't slow down. He foraged the whole time. Sounds like I'm dragging some debris. Uh -huh. or a stick. Yeah, I need to see what it is before it damages something. It's it doesn't right sound there. right. It's right behind me. Let's see what we're dragging. What was that? Did you hear that? It's a, it's a pine bough that's dragging under the front of the vehicle. It's a little green, eh? It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Gosh. I was like, oh my god, she saw Bigfoot. You said, you're looking at me in the, in the car seat, and I bent down to look at the camera on the back of the car. <laughs> <laughs> So what did that scream sound like? I think you said there was two different pitches at the same yep, time. it did. It was two different... I don't know if one was overlapping the other or it just changed... Pitch? Pitch in the middle of the scream. Higher than lower. Both high and screechy. And like a woman slash hawk screaming gravelly. Huh. But it scared me enough to clutch my chest. It scared me. 
I wonder if I go reverse. It might pull out. It'll pop out. Yeah, this is a good straight section. That didn't. smell the entire forest in here. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, there's a grouse. Oh, they do. They're here. There goes, just landed in that tree. Wow. Well, that's the first grouse I've seen on this expedition out here. Easy food. Yeah, some grouse are pretty stupid. You could just throw a club at them. They let you get that close to them. Yep, you can walk right behind one and it'll just keep walking in front of you. I don't want to call them stupid, but you can sometimes <laughs> get lucky and, and club them. <laughs> I've seen them do it on Survivor shows, and I've been in situations where I could have done it myself. As a matter of fact, when I was on a Bigfoot uh, investigation at Lost Creek, um, I had a Mel Grouse come right up and get in my face trying to scare me off. It was making me laugh. I could have just freaking belly flopped on him and had me a big old male grouse. I don't know what he was thinking. I'd never laugh so hard. <laughs> it was it was being tough and trying to be intimidating, and I all I did was just laugh. It was funny. You've been attacked by a squirrel that way too. Yeah, a squirrel pulled that on me in uh, Green Canyon. I know. You see a a. a a grouse has no chance at beating a human. A squirrel has no chance at beating a human, yet they got right up in my face and tried to intimidate me. Just think if you get like a bobcat or a raccoon on a bad day or, or God forbid Bigfoot, you know. I think all animals have a bad day or a day where they feel bad. Oh, I saw a uh, Jenny and my daughter get attacked by a freaking nasty old robin. Yeah, it was swooping and grabbing our hair. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you, you girls were like crying practically. Kelsey was. Kelsey was crying. And I was screaming. Uh huh. And I'm like, I'm running. like, it's just a robin freaking smack that bugger out of the air and wring its neck. <laughs> <laughs> it would swoop down and grab. Me. And Jenny, Jenny's like, it's, it was dirty and old. <laughs> it, was, it was a crazy. Crazy bird. We were, it was attacking them at our camp in Glacier National Park. <laughs> it was grabbing at our hair. And it was not, it, it was the craziest thing. I remember my grandma getting attacked by a bunch of starlings. She was a little mean, intimidating old lady, too. And I'm sure if it was just one starling, she would slapped it down but yeah she got attacked by a uh, multiple she sent us over there with our BB guns after <laughs> <laughs> yup they were attacking her beehive her beehive hairdo <laughs> If I could choose my Bigfoot encounter that I, where I get to film Bigfoot, I would surely appreciate it crossing the road about 30 feet in front of us in a car. That would be great if you could do that for us. Unfortunately, it'll probably be when I'm out behind my tent in the middle of the night. 
going to the bathroom and I have no chance of getting that bugger on camera. Well, I'm starving for some real food. Oh, we went up that way a ways too. We went we went that way to where the road ends. Yeah. We've been all over this mountain. Like every road. Leave no stone unturned. Just like that. Bigfoot that we found last night. What? <laughs> that hike that we did yesterday where uh, oh, all those, yeah. we found the Bigfoot tracks and all the rocks turned over and we could, it looked like someone was taking its hand on branches and ripping the moss That's off. Right. Okay, I forgot already. Yeah. We never did any find any bear claws or bear prints. The only thing we found was what looked like the Bigfoot track where all those rocks had been pulled up. What was that place called? Marmot? Uh, Marmot or some mammoth? I can't remember. I know it's a place with Bigfoot sightings. Is why we went there. I'll have to look at the sighting reports we brought. Whoa! Look at that big old hole. Yeah, that was a pretty good print right in the side hill there. Yeah. Yeah, we found evidence of where it had just barely come and pulled up a bunch of rocks, so for whatever reason, probably eating something underneath them. And then we also found evidence of old rocks that had been pulled up and the impressions where they had been had worn away with the weather and everything, so something kept coming back to that, that spot. Rummaging through the rocks. One was a boulder, though. I don't know how much it might have weighed. A couple hundred pounds or it, so. God, it it was big. I've, I've helped Mike move some big stones when he used to um, work at American Monument. And that rock is twice as big as the heaviest stone I ever helped him move. And I helped him move a 300-pound stone one time. So you and I would be... Uh, you and I together would have a tough time moving that boulder that was moved. And it was moved uphill. It was spun uphill. Yeah, it was moved uphill, which is really weird. That's a lot more strength to move something uphill. Yeah, you guys will have to watch that video, too. That one's really exciting. At least when we was there live yesterday doing that investigation, it was pretty exciting. That's actually uh, only a couple of miles from our base camp. Well, I shouldn't say a couple of miles. Um, it was about seven, eight miles. <laughs> yeah. It's the Coal Wash River. Uh, Cola Wash. C O L L A W S A S H. Cola Wash. Cola Wash. It uh, empties into the Clackamas River. It's that water's crystal clear. Looks like really clean water. We were just up at the snow. I bet you that water's freezing cold. It's getting fresh snow melt on it. It's 
tomorrow we're going to be investigating some of the Clackamas River Bigfoot sightings. We, we've got about 15 Bigfoot sighting reports that we're investigating on this uh, week-long expedition out here into the area. Just an amazing place. Well, I'm wore out. I don't know what was harder, hiking uphill or hiking through all the snow. I think hiking through snow. I think we, I think, I think we got a good mile of walk, of hiking through snow. <laughs> Altogether, at least a mile worth. When it got to the point where the snow was six feet deep and you just, it was endless. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't I, I didn't bring my snowshoes. <laughs> I didn't even bring my snow boots. I've just brought some some water resistant hiking boots. Both Brody and Jenny are in hiking shoes. Looks like a fun river to tube, doesn't it? But it's much too cold to tube right now. Well, we finished our hike about an hour before the sun completely goes down and kind of timed that about right. Yeah, I think it's all of us cooling down from our hike. Yeah. Well, we got rained on half the hike. It started raining before we turned back, so we... Almost true. But it was a nice rain, though. Yeah. I just didn't want it to downpour, that would have been rough. Grabbing snow on the ground, it wasn't that cold. So. No, it's really nice. Oh, wow. Can I take a picture? Yes, please do. Okay, stop. You got it. Oh, my, that's so pretty. You find her oh. when you zoomed up on the cliffs? You did pretty all right. I'm going to work. Yeah, that we we had an action-packed day. That's for sure. A lot of physical activity. 
Cicada? I think so. Oh, they have those? Pretty good. Oh. Um, from Taco Bell, um, one of my favorite things, and not all Taco Bells have them, is a Mexi Melt. Not on the menu, but I ask for it. Yeah, you rarely see it on the menu. And then you ask for it, and some of them don't know what you're talking about, but the ones that do, yummy. What is and it they're like? And they're small. Um, they're, they're, they're like a, um... A small burrito or a small taco? It's like a small street taco. Yeah, it it takes like two or three of them to equal a regular a, to equal a to equal a regular burrito. But they are yummy. I like them anyway. <laughs> we just get we've been on the mountain for about six hours four hours of it hiking and farting around looking for bigfoot and we're starving if you can't tell it's weird where it was so remote where we were at i consider this civilization yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least if you broke down someone would find you yeah. where we were up up there yeah we someone might not come along for days They might have found the car, but they wouldn't have found us. <laughs> we only got about three miles away from the car. But, yeah. Depends on which direction Bigfoot drags you off in. <laughs> or you fall down. In a There's another... Um, Sage hen. I don't know if it's a sage hen, but it's a grouse. It's oh, a type yeah. of grouse. I know they're yummy. Forest chickens. I know Mike Hansen really likes them, and uh, anybody I've ever talked to that's ate them say they're really good. If I've had one, I didn't know about it. I know my parents fed me a lot of wild meat growing up. Now sometimes my mom wouldn't tell us what it was so that we wouldn't turn our nose up to it. I used to eat venison and, and elk when I was a kid and didn't even know. Oh, at Mike's house, I've eaten a lot of um, elk and deer and didn't know that's what it was because uh, he puts it like in his hamburger helper, you know, elk burger or... Um, or deer burger or whatever, he'll put it in his hamburger helper or you don't even know. And then I was telling him one time, I'm like, I don't think I've ever had elk burger. And he's like, oh, you have, yeah, you have. <laughs> Last time you had hamburger helper at my house, that's what it was. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> Your taste buds are like ten times more sensitive. So our parents were the type of parents where just eat the food on your plate and you're gonna sit there until you eat your food. Yep, that's how it was when I grew up too. So my parents get done first and they leave the kitchen and leave us sitting there at the table with yucky elk roast. <laughs> For the dogs? <laughs> so it wasn't for anything. Just, just to get we rid of it? Have to eat it. Oh, like, you, you naughty kids. <laughs> what is? We're like, we're finished now. We eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know Mike makes uh, 
deer roast is just so yummy. But, um, I mean, he does a lot to make it yummy. He'll take a deer roast and uh, he'll pack a few pounds of uh, onions around it, um, up to five pounds of bacon, and he'll cook that bugger. Yeah, yeah, he'll cook that bugger, and just before it's done, about ten minutes before it's done, he'll put brown sugar on the top of it, and then uh, he'll uh, caramelize it by cooking it another uh, ten minutes. And I mean, you just want seconds, thirds it is such good roast. Well, you wrap anything in bacon and you can choke it down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> bacon makes everything better. <laughs> It must be the state car. <laughs> it's the new thing. Just the, the Subaru. I see a Subarus up here all over. There's the ranger station. Let's stop in there and see if they got some information for us. Maybe they got some fresh Bigfoot sightings. Oh, yeah, they're really going to give that up. They would. I mean, look who we are. We're cool. <laughs> We're RMSO. All right. Um, we're going to go in the ranger station, see if anybody's around, and try and get logistics on the area. I hope you guys enjoy the look at the Clackamas River, the Skookum Lake area, and everywhere in between. Make sure you guys watch our uh, Bigfoot Expedition hiking video. We... Saw some cool stuff, heard some cool stuff on that. Keep on watching, we're going to keep on squatching.